Donald Jr. would be a head coach in the NBA. But not just a head coach in the NBA, we get to say welcome home, Wes Unsell Jr. He is the head coach of the Washington Wizards. Wes, uh, we know that your heart has always been with us. As we watch you go from strength to strength, our hearts were with you. But now, we got all of you. You're with us again, and we're so glad and so proud. Wes Unsell Jr., welcome back. Thank you so much. Uh, this is truly an honor. Um, to get an NBA head coaching job, and certainly for it to happen here uh, makes it that much more special. And I couldn't be more thankful uh, to Mr. Leonsis, to Tommy and his staff uh, for this incredible opportunity. Um, long time in, in, in the waiting, uh, put in a lot of hours to get to this point, put myself in position, um, and for this opportunity to, to unfold is so gratifying. Um, I have so many people to thank, and obviously I'm not going to, go down the litany <laughs> of people to do that. But I do want to mention a few s special people. Uh, obviously, my, my parents, uh, my mom is here, thankfully. Um, my wife, my son, my daughter, um, just to have them in enjoy this moment. Uh, and my sister as well. I think it's, uh, it's so gratifying for all of us to be together. Obviously, uh, I know my dad's up there smiling down. Uh, he's probably chuckling. <laughs> uh, thank you, the, you moron. I told you not to, not to do this. Uh, so I know he's, he's extremely proud. Um, I'd also like to thank uh, some of the people that helped me get to this point in my career. Um, all the staffs, uh, the coaches, the organizations have really given me opportunity, allowed me a voice, uh, that, which has helped propel me and prepare me for these uh, opportunities. Uh, obviously, uh, my situation in Denver, I'd really like to uh, thank them. Uh, those at KSC Sports, their ownership, uh, their president, Tim Conley, and of course, uh, my former boss, kind of, it's kind of nice to say that, uh, <laughs> Michael Malone, who's been a, uh, an advocate of mine from day one. So it's certainly a special time through the uh, past six years, but I'm uh, eagerly awaiting this new opportunity. And we'll also get some words from our, our general manager, uh, Tommy Shepard, general manager of the Washington Wizards. Tommy? Well, it gives us very, a great deal of pride to, to have Wes Unseld as our head coach. It certainly was a very long process from the outside looking in, but for us it was really a, uh, all about getting it right. And as we interviewed a lot of candidates, we, we really kind of laid out what we were looking for, and Wes hit every single mark uh, with very high marks. And there was no question in our mind when we made the decision that we made the right one for us. We were so excited and thrilled to have everybody here, part of our family again. And the chairman and founder and chief executive officer of Monumental Sports Entertainment, Ted Leonsis. Um, the move was about making the team better, um, winning, and looking at what we had as an organization and what we needed. And um, I love the experience that Wes had had at uh, winning organizations, especially the work that he had done in Denver. And when you drill down on the process that Tommy and his staff ran, uh, it was very, very comprehensive, but it was also um, trying to get to what do we have today, what do we need to improve, and what will we do differently, and how are you moving from an assistant coach to a head coach position uniquely um, able to help us to get better. And uh, Wes's focus on uh, defense and game planning and all of the little things, all of the details that get you to win a couple of more games every year because you're out preparing the other team uh, really gave great comfort to everyone in our ownership group that this was a good move. And, you know, while I'm so thrilled and honored that we have Wes here, um, it wasn't because of the legacy here. It was because of the process and the, um, the game planning and the reviewing of the film together. And uh, Wes was just incredibly impressive with how um, relevant his understanding of what we needed and what we would do differently. So sometimes I say with media and these events, you have uh, collateral damage on things uh, that 
Connie and the whole family are here. We have uh, collateral goodness, uh, <laughs> but, but we're here to win ball games and do better than we did last season. And um, I feel that we're really in it together. And this was a very, very positive move for our basketball team. And as we got uh, to this special day, and it's, it's a wonderful day, uh, Tommy, why don't you just talk about that? You had a plan in mind, what you were looking for uh, in a head coach, because this, this is an important decision. And obviously, Wes Unsell Jr. fit the bill. Well, I think I, I can't say enough about how meticulous Wes is as, a, as he prepares for games. We've, we've done, uh, we, we worked together so long ago that really it was kind of getting reintroduced to each other in our workflow as we went through the process and through the interviews. And the one thing that always stood out with Wes is his intelligence about the game, where the game's headed, the modern NBA, and certainly his, his proficiency on the defensive side of the ball, which is an area that we absolutely must address immediately. Those are something that's an area we know we can control and get better immediately, and I think that's something he'll deliver on. But really, his, his ability to manage the staff, his ability to have great, fantastic relationships with players. You know, when you look at his career, not just the time he was, certainly when he was in D.C., but he, he worked with Steph Curry and Clay Thompson when they were young, with Lucevic, Tobias Harris, Oladipo when he was in Orlando. And certainly you look at the, the MVP season that Jokic had, and Jokic was begging him not to leave Denver. Um, <laughs> you know, the players, Jamal Murray, all the different players that he touched there. And certainly it's a, it's a collaborative group, but when players call you to tell you about you should hire this guy unsolicited, that's pretty impressive to me. And I, I can't say enough about the, the background that we did on everybody that we, that we uh, interviewed with, but as we kept laying out our process and what we really wanted from our head coach, it just all the roads kind of led back to West Jr. Very excited to have him here. Again, I interviewed about 20 people from a different gender, different race, international. Uh, it, it was an exhaustive process. It was very diverse and very inclusive intentionally. You know, when we started this process, we set out to find the very best person. And we interviewed former players, former head coaches, people from the WNBA, people from the NBA, uh, from years ago, people that are current assistants, former players, every category you could possibly want because we wanted that diversity of ideas and inclusion of everyone. But again, as you go through this process, you can interview a lot of people, but sometimes, as they say, the cream rises, and this is really where we ended up, where we landed on. It was a tremendous opportunity for us, and I, I just think that for where our team is and where we're headed to, Wes is the perfect leader for that team. Well, Wes, you have always had me at hello, but obviously you had to convince <laughs> Tommy and, and Ted. What, what were some of the things that you brought up, uh, your vision, a, a, as you sold yourself, as you wanted to come back home and be the head coach of this team? Well, I mean, it's, you know, you, you touched on it. The, the defensive side of the ball has been an issue here. Um, and that's an area where I've, I've been charged with for the past five seasons, and I've, we've seen marketable improvement in that area. Um, and it, it boils down to buy-in and commitment, and I think uh, – all parties involved, including the players, they, they know for us to take that next step to uh, really get to the level which we think we uh, can attain. It's going to take that that commitment to uh, that side of the ball. And again, uh, Ted, uh, as you make this an attractive destination, it, it should be pointed out the commitment the ownership group is trying to, to, to foster to attract someone like Wes Unsell Jr. or the players to the franchise. Yeah, we wanted to make sure that the, in the process, we did talk to a lot of people. Um, I'm extroverted. I think it's a good thing to get lots of input and hear lots of voices. And, um, and it's also a way for us to uh, reintroduce the organization throughout the league. And what I'll say is that the NBA is in great, great hands. Um, every single person that we met and talked to was outstanding. And you've seen that a lot of assistant coaches are taking the next step, um, especially this summer. And I think there's a reason for that. Um, this is a very, very demanding job. And sometimes when you're a head coach and a second and third time head coach, um, I don't think you work as hard. I think you rely on your assistant coaches and what I found with the interviews and especially in talking with Wes how they do the game planning they know the players they know the tendencies and they have to work really really hard to prepare for each and every game and I, I looked at our team and there were times when I thought we lost 
games that we shouldn't have. Um, yes, defensively, but I just think having a work ethic and a demanding style will be a really, really good um, point of differentiation for us. The, the players all in the exit interviews, when we talked to them about what we were lacking and how we can improve, they talked about the little things. They talked about defensive intensity. They talked about communications. Uh, when we talked to Wes, like what's the, what's the key to better defense? It's um, hard work, game planning, communications. And, and we watched some film together. It was really fascinating in talking to the assistant um, coaches, the eye on detail where everyone is positioned on the floor and you know what they were doing right, what they were doing wrong. And that's what we want to be known for. We'd like to have great talent, but you'd like to have a great organization that's very professional, very thorough, and demands the, the best out of everyone in the organization. And Tim mentions organization. Uh, Wes, uh, uh, you know the NBA is, continues to improve and, and rise in, in so many ways. And, just your perspective now as you come home uh, and there, there's a, a dedicated practice facility, uh, you know, I know you're one that likes to collaborate and it, it is now about a collaborative effort. One person doesn't have the solution and, and that infrastructure exists uh, with this franchise. Some of your thoughts just as you come back to the Wizards and, and what you see the commitment is. Well, I just think tr it, there's tremend tremendous uh, potential here. Uh, aside from the roster, the alignment between these two gentlemen on my right and left their uh, respective staffs. Um, I think the uh, shared and collaborative resources that have uh, been laid out, um, I've had the opportunity to meet with some of those department heads and just to see how uh, their visions are, are, are aligned with mine. Um, and obviously it's, it's all geared to winning, but uh, there's a plan behind it. So uh, you, you feel really comfortable um, in this seat knowing that you have such a support system, a wide net of people who are not only competent, but uh, extremely gracious with their time, and we're all pulling in the same direction. Tommy, uh, again, you kind of touched on this, but um, to see Wes in this position next to you, uh, ready to, to guide us uh, this season, uh, from where you remember him working with us is, how many jobs did you, I, mean, I think the only job he didn't have was a radio announcer, but uh, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm hanging on to that, but uh, just some of your thoughts on the, on the growth that you've witnessed firsthand. You know, in the NBA, I think you almost call them DVR relationships sometimes. We worked together, and then he left and went to other places, and we'd catch up, and we were always friendly. But, you know, you, you're in your own world when you're working for an NBA franchise. So getting to re-know Wes through this process in terms of where he was as a coach is very important because you really were about to work together, and the partnership needs to be one where we are absolutely in line. And I was amazed at Wes's growth as as – as a person, he was always meticulous, always prepared, but his knowledge of the game and where it's been, the responsibility he's been given, other places that he's been, uh, just made such a huge impression on me. And I, I knew he had it in him, but when he showed it right up there front and center, you know, that really was the moment of truth for me. He said, this guy's really ready to be a head coach. You know, and I, I know for, from personal experience, you know, there's a lot of people ready. They just need the opportunity. And I think given this opportunity, Wes is going to be a fantastic head coach. And we know that Wes Sunshell Jr. has certainly paid his dues. He even had dinner with me at training camp. That means you've definitely paid your, <laughs> paid your dues. And, and he paid the with, tab. I no, right, no. <laughs> but but this, uh, that's important to note that and, and it has been expressed that uh, uh, you literally have done just about every job. And uh, I've watched you personally work, work those long hours. And it occurs to me as I look out and I see your, your lovely mother, Connie, and your, your wife and uh, children and your, your sister is, is here. Uh, today as well. This day is also a, about family. So you're not here because of uh, your family name. You're here because of your family uh, work ethic. And, and it occurred to me today that who else comes into a, an NBA head coaching job with 40 years of experience? As your dad, it's probably a wry smile, and he probably is saying, you moron, what are you thinking of? Because he called me a moron several times, but that was a whole other story. Um, all those car rides uh, back and forth to then Capital Center Arena, uh, the, the players that were in the locker room during those times, the, the Dave Bings, the, the Phil Chenier's go right down the line. 
do you still draw on that today? Is that, that's an education process. I don't know of any other head coach that has a Hall of Fame pedigree that you could just talk to your dad. Right. Well, you know, it's funny, the, uh, you know, not to that extent, but even the staff that I was a, a part of in Denver, very unique. Um, Michael Malone, myself, David Adelman, uh, all of our fathers coached in the NBA. So it's like a trifecta. We could all kind of draw on those experiences, uh, even from our ball boy days uh, to now. <laughs> and I think it's, uh, those moments aren't lost where you kind of learn, you pick up things, nuanced things that, uh, how to read people, how to relate to people, how to uh, you know, push the right buttons to uh, get the most out of people. And I think uh, from afar, you absorb some of that. So now when you have an opportunity to uh, be thrust in those situations, you, you feel a little bit more comfortable. Wes Hunsell Jr., a special person. This is special preparation you had to get to this point, and this, this is a special day. We appreciate everybody watching and joining us here in the Etihad Lounge at Capital One Arena. And we're now going to open up some questions. So, Ted, Wes, Tommy, you ready for the questions? We'll begin with our, our good friend, uh, David Aldridge. David, go ahead. Afternoon, everybody. Congrats, Wes. Um, I just wonder what, what got you from maybe going away from basketball as a life toward basketball as a life when you were a young man? Well, obviously, the, uh, you know, you still have that competitive spirit. You know, I, I played a, at a Division three school. Um, you know, it's no different. You, you put your heart, you pour everything into it. Um, and I, I think, you know, once that's taken away, you take that step away from graduation, you're, tri you're still trying to find avenues to be a part of that. Uh, it wasn't in the cards at first. Um, the, the whole thought process, and I shared this with Tommy, was to take a year off, uh, go back to grad school, and, uh, you know, move on. Um, I was obviously had the blessing of uh, a father who worked in sports, so he gave me the opportunity to uh, get an internship, and uh, you know, and, and it worked me like a dog. So, uh, <laughs> but it paid off, and, and, and a lot of those valuable experiences are, have, uh, I think helped prepare, prepare me uh, for this opportunity. Um, so it's you know you have that fire, you have that competitive nature, and you just want to find ways to still you know quench that thirst. Uh, so as you, you know, gain momentum, uh, from whether it's the advanced scouting moving uh, as a uh, fifth, fourth assistant, being around it, it just still, it, it still burns. And I think you uh, want to continue that path. So our friend Phil Chenier uh, shared with me that uh, a conversation you had with your, your father and your, your father said, well, he, he wants to try this basketball and I'll, I'll, I'll give him a shot, but there's gonna be no shortcuts. And Phil said he probably worked you harder than anybody else. And I think we could all probably agree on that. Uh, as always, David, thank you for the question. Kareem Copeland, Kareem, you're next if you have a question. Hey, everybody. Um, Kareem Gopal from Washington, uh, Washington Post. Nice to meet you, Wes. Nice to meet you. I want to ask, you know, you, you briefly talked about, you know, absorbing these lessons over the years. And, you know, you've had so many stops and dealt with, um, you know, so many kind of incredible people that have kind of come through your life. I'm curious, what are some of the biggest things that you kind of always said, OK, when I get this chance, this is how I want to do it in this way, or some of the biggest things that you've kind of carried over the years that you've always wanted to implement? Well, I think the, the most uh, important thing is you have to be authentic. I, I can't pretend uh, to be someone I'm not. Um, I think you have to, those relationships will they'll develop organically. Um, and I think when that happens, it allows you to get through some of those tough, tough stretches. Uh, as we all know, through 82 game season, there are going to be some tough stretches. And that's just the nature of the league nature of the business. Um, but uh, you just have to be yourself. You have to find your own voice, um, be comfortable in your own skin, and, and coach the way you feel fits your, your roster and your team. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Next, we'll go to Darren Haynes. Darren? Hey, Coach Darren Haynes, WSA 9. Uh, congratulations on the opportunity. Um, if you can share, what was that moment like when you got that call or whenever it was face to face, when you got the job, what was the reaction like for yourself or maybe even the family around you? Honestly, it was a uh, surreal feeling, um, almost a feeling of disbelief. I know that it might sound crazy. Um, going throughout this process, and you know, I've been through the process with other teams over the last three years. Um, and at times you felt like you were close. So you never wanted to jump ahead of yourself 
until you actually got that call. So it, it's always that internal battle of being excited, but not too excited. Um, Tommy and I have been talking five, six times a day. So to see his, you know, his name pop up was not extraordinary until he said what he said. And literally, it's like you're frozen there for a minute, you know, trying to absorb it. Um, and then, of course, the all the, you know, the emotions, the uh, even think about all the logistics, you know, the family dynamic, all of that kind of rushes in. You're like, wow, okay. Um, but for a brief moment, there, there's that sense of relief, of joy, um, excitement, and a little bit of trepidation. I'll be honest, it's this is new. Um, so it's, it's, it's a new life for me, it's a new experience, and it's, it's one that I'm going to grasp and really uh, take hold of. By the way, uh, Russ mentioned a Division three school earlier. I was just reminded, the John, not just any Division three school, but Johns Hopkins Blue Jays. He's a proud Jays. I went to Towson. I couldn't even spell Johns Hopkins, so that's, <laughs> that's impressive that you could do that. Let's, uh, let's go to uh, Fred Katz. Fred? Hi, Wes. Fred Katz from the FBA. Um, I am curious, during your time in Washington, you worked with a lot of offensive of quality and success. And by the time you get to you're more of a kind of guy. How did that transformation uh, take shape for you? And do you consider yourself a specialist side of the ball? Didn't quite grab well, I was going to say, Wes, just you can say whatever you want now because yeah. no one heard the question. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. I, I think the, uh, <laughs> uh, the defensive side of the ball was, uh, yeah. I think, yeah, I apologize. Well, I, you know, it's funny, the, uh, the way that whole thing developed for us um, was kind of a happenstance. Um, and once again, Coach Malone kind of thrust this upon me, and we at that time were a poor defensive team. So I'm not going to sit up here and say it was just me. I think the biggest credit goes to the guys. They're the ones that have to do it. And that goes back to the buy-in, uh, the accountability, and they allowed me to coach them. Uh, so schematically, you can come up with whatever. But, uh, you know, are you doing it right? Are you doing it with effort? Um, you're doing it together. Uh, but we're allowed to coach. So it's, yes, you may be in charge of a certain area, but we're all basketball coaches. So I'm not concerned about the offensive end, the defensive end. It's, it's, it's basketball. And obviously, you want to put your, your players in the best light to have the most success. Our next question from uh, Ohm Young Masika from ESPN. Ohm, I apologize. Hey Wes, uh, congrats on getting job um, and returning to DC. I was wondering, uh, what is your vision for Bradley Beal, Russell Westbrook? How you envision them playing together, and what did you learn about having Jokic and Murray, another star duo, that might help you guide with those two? Well, yeah, it's funny. I had great conversations with uh, with both of those guys, um, and I felt like I was talking to the same person. And I and I say that because. The message was clear that uh, they want to be coached. Um, I think that they're looking for the accountability. Um, they're excited for this new opportunity, um, and I think they both know. I mean, offense is not the, not not the issue right now. So they, they, there's buy-in right now, and we'll see as we get into training camp and in the preseason. There has to be carryover. So I think you know there, there's an alignment there in thought, and I think we're all on the same page as what what's going to be required of them. But uh, the, the best part about that is both of them, as, as leaders of this team, are committed to uh, being better on that end. We continue welcoming home Wes Unsell Jr. with questions from the media. Uh, Matt Paris, I believe. Matt, you're next. Matt? Hi, Wes. Uh, in what way, in what way do you think you're probably going to I didn't hear that question. I apologize. Matt, Matt did you repeat it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I still didn't get it. I'm trying. I'm working a remote here, but I'm probably opening a garage door on Wisconsin Avenue. <laughs> <laughs> um, Matt, yeah, may, may, maybe if Matt could text it to uh, Scott Hall. So, uh, Matt, if you could text the question, we'll get to that. Kellen yeah. Song is next. Kellen, you there? Yes, yes. Uh, congratulations. Um, um, you mentioned this in the. What are your And you mentioned you, you spoke with Bradley and uh, Russ. Have you spoken to other players as well? The players. Um, Tommy was gracious enough to give me like a, a roll of deck of numbers, but uh, 
a few guys are in town um, working out. I was able to bump into a few of them today. Uh, so that you know, that's the first part, uh, being able to put faces and names together, let them you know feel at ease with this new situation, um, and ju just let let them know, uh, you know my vision and my expectations. And I think uh, everyone, myself included, we're eager to get to work, get to know each other, um, and really trying to generate that chemistry that we're going to need going forward. One thing I might add to that, okay, in the NBA, players talk to players. And they were the best advocates of West Jr. Actually, was a lot of our players heard from other players that played with, for West either in Denver or other places that he'd been. So they were very aware of what they were getting as a head coach before he had a chance to reach out. And, and certainly, as we move forward, and he'll make those connections with players. I think a great, a great deal of satisfaction for me is, is West's reputation over 20 plus years as an assistant coach in the NBA. Players know, and they speak to each other, and that's the best sales job we could possibly want is when another player from another team tells our players about what is coming through the door. That was very easy for me to make that transition with our guys. All right, through the uh, old-fashioned technology of texting, we have the rest of Matt Paris's question. Uh, what ways, uh, West Jr., like his dad, and what ways are you not like your dad, both in coaching and life? And remember, he's watching over you. <laughs> no pressure. Thanks, Dave. Um, and I think we both share the... Uh, that deep-rooted passion for the game. Uh, he, he was coming from a different place, you know, as a, as a player, obviously an MVP, a champion. And, and I think uh, my experiences, you know, to this point have been different. Uh, so uh, where I think I'm a little anal in preparation, I think he was more the relationship dynamic. Uh, and I think also uh, as a player, it's easy because he, he lived it, he did it at a high level. And it's easy for me at times to stop the film and be saying, well, be here, not here. But it's also that, that dynamic for players to, to get that feedback. Um, they're the ones that have to do it. And I think that, once again, builds that collaborative spirit that uh, their opinions are, are valid. And, uh, and I, like, I like that feedback and, and want continued feedback from them because I think it, uh, it'll help empower them. And now they become more vested in what we're trying to do. Okay, next question from uh, Wes Hall. Wes? All right. Uh, first of all, thank you. Uh, congratulations, Wes, for another Wes, and uh, welcome home. Um, you've spoken earlier about the next step and being prepared and wanting to take the next step for this team. What does that next step actually look like for you moving forward here? Great advice from Coach Malone was at some point, um, you've got to learn to prepare as a head coach and, and less like an assistant. And I think that's, yes, the details are important, but not as concerned with the minutia of the day-to-day. -day. It's about managing people. Uh, and, I, and I think that's the biggest difference in taking that next step. Uh, we always say those 18 inches to your left or right um, because that personal dy dynamic is what uh, solidifies that, that core group. Uh, the X's and O's will take care of itself. Uh, you know, I, I think that's, that's actually the easy part. It's trying to manage people, get the best out of them. Um, and uh, when you do that, I think you build, yourself, uh, you build yourself up to have a lot of success. And we'll continue requesting from uh, Yaron Talpaz. Yaron, you there? Yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, welcome, uh, Wes. I'm from the Washington Wizards uh, Israeli uh, media channels. Um, so uh, I'm happy to ask whether, uh, you know, what you felt about Denny Avdia's uh, first season and what you see for him. Uh, I see you guys laughing. Uh, so yeah, uh, what you see for see for him, uh, you know, maybe uh, offensively, defensively on both ends of the floor. You're smiling. Oh yeah, yeah definitely smiling. Uh, you know, it's funny. You, you prepare for for teams and you scout teams from afar. Obviously, playing uh, teams in the East only twice a year, it's it's somewhat of a limited scope. But as we got down the road in this process, you you, you start kind of looking back, digesting a little bit more film. Um, understanding the nuances of the roster. And I, I think Denny's got a lot of potential. Um, I'm extremely um, happy that I get an opportunity to coach a guy like that because I think there's a lot of versatility there. Um, obviously, and I think it goes to a man. Defensively, we have to be better. But I think he's got a lot of physical tools. Um, obviously, it struggled a little bit you know, with uh, the shooting. I think he's a shooter. He'll, he's going to make shots. Uh, you will come back to the average. But uh, uh, for him, it's just the let the game slow down a little bit. You know, with COVID, so many restrictions the teams had, injuries, uh, there wasn't a lot of on-the-floor practice time. 
Um, and with that, you didn't get the necessary reps. So I, I think it's, uh, it's a little unfair to really categorize a guy right now. But just from afar, it's, uh, I think he's got tremendous potential. Thank you. Thank you, Jan. Uh, we'll be rooting Denny on this season <laughs> as well. Let's, uh, Ed Lee, we'll uh, add you there. Hi, this, message for, uh, this question is for Wes. Uh, Wes, I was wondering, um, your upbringing in Baltimore, your playing careers at Loyola and Johns Hopkins, how did they shape you as a person and as a coach? When you dug that deep, thank you for that. Uh, th those environments were, were great for my formative years. Um, you know, I, I was around great coaches uh, where it wasn't necessarily just about winning. It was about building, building habits, um, you know, uh, well-rounded human beings being, you know, as the Jesuits would say, men for others. Uh, so I think that, you know, you kind of carry some of these little tidbits with you um, and you take a step back and yes, that, that is our goal. We want to win. That's what's important. This is a results driven business, but it's also part of the journey. Um, and obviously when you have great people around you, uh, that, that journey is, you know, that much more special. I have another, last one. I have another one. We didn't rehearse this part. Did we? <laughs> oh, Zach from our good friend, Zach from Japan. Zach, uh, you have a question. Yeah. yeah. Hey, uh, Dave, thank you so much. Hello, coach. Uh, I'm Zach Ikuma, the Japanese language reporter with the Wizards. Congratulations. I don't know if you can hear me. I think the mic's cut off for a sec. Um, since Yaron asked about Denny earlier, I got to ask about Rui Hachimura. Uh, I wanted to get your thoughts on Rui going into his third season and now about to play in the Olympics. Well, it's, it's funny, Tommy's been sending me clips from his games. Uh, you know, just, I'll get like a 15 or 30 second clip and uh, he, he's playing with a lot of confidence. And I think he's another young player who, uh, you know, will fit, fits our core. And I think it really helps elevate uh, our, our our talent, you know, talking to Bradley, talking to uh, Russell, I think both guys look at these two individuals as, as guys who can elevate our overall platform. And, and the, the whole question is, well, how do we bring them along? And I think they really, you know, are going to take it upon themselves to be part of that process. Uh, but Rui is uh, another talented young man, um, honestly, who gave us fits this season. So I, it, kind of a blessing to be able to coach him instead of uh, play against him. Well, this truly has been a special day as I look at your mother, Connie, here, and uh, we're rooting for the Unsold School to continue to make a difference in people's lives as it has done now for 30-plus oh, years, I, I believe. And your lovely wife, Evelyn, and, and children are here today, and, and your sister, Kim, as well. This is a special day for our, our, our franchise uh, in so many ways. Needless to say, the, the Unsold name is linked with our franchise. It's as, as strong as uh, the character and strength of Wes Unseld Sr. and now Wes Unseld Jr., who we say welcome home to, and he is the head coach of the Washington Wizards. On behalf of Ted Leonsis, the chairman and founder and chief executive of Monumental Sports, Wizards General Manager Tommy Shepard, and our new head coach, I thank you for the time this afternoon.